One of the questions I get asked a lot is, what kind of assignments do I grade? How do I grade? What do I actually put in my grade book? So this video is all about all the things that I put into my grade book and how I manage all my classroom assignments. When I first started teaching, I graded everything. Um, I gave points for everything. I used to give extra credit <laughs> for any students that had me. I used to have these like little mole bucks things. I mean, and they were cool. It was fun. But you know, when you think about what grades mean, right? Grades indicate proficiency, understanding, and it's also a personal thing. Grades are what we assign to our students, their earned assessments of their knowledge and their skill set in a particular content. I emphasize the fact that it's a personal thing because I really believe in the fact that grades represent what the student knows. That's at the heart of what it, what it is. And so my philosophy has changed in that I don't grade homework anymore. Um, I don't do mole bucks or any kind of extra credit because these assignments are not reflections of what the student necessarily knows because how can you assure that that student is going home and actually completing that homework assignment alone, you know, or um, it's really a reflection of what the student knows. Like, how do you know they're not just going home and working with their tutor or maybe they have a parent at home that's a chemist, you know, you just don't know. Or maybe, heck, and uh, this happens, unfortunately, the student is copying the answers from another student or the answer key, etc. So, so for me, um, homework is more of a formative assessment. And you may say, oh my gosh, like that's crazy. And it is, you know, I will say I was really nervous and I only changed my philosophy as a result of changing jobs. It's amazing the growth that you can see as yourself in yourself as a teacher when you change um, jobs. But that's a whole nother video. <laughs> um, but like I said, you know, I don't grade homework anymore. And it's been awesome because it kind of takes the focus off of like getting the grade, it's more about like, did I learn it? So homework is used as a tool to decide, does the student know what they're doing? And if they don't, should they come in for some extra help? So it's completely formative. Um, the other thing um, that I want to mention too is I, the extra credit thing, right, that's great inflation. So I don't do any kind of extra credit just because, again, if you're giving points for things that really isn't a direct reflection of what the student knows, like, you know, bringing in tissue boxes, like, like that's not really a fair reflection. I also don't grade any group work. You got to hold your students accountable and also grades are personal. It's a personal thing. And so if you're grading group work, how, like, it's done with the group, but the report card isn't a group grade. The report card belongs to the individual student. So that's another thing. I mean, it's just, that's part of my own philosophy. Like I said, the grade represents what the student knows. It's a sign, you know, to the student based on the skill set and the knowledge. Um, it's not, in my opinion, appropriate to do that. Um, so I'm really happy in the fact that I have seen a lot of growth in the students as a result of not grading the homework. They're focusing on actually doing the problems and trying to get the problems correct and trying to fix their mistakes. So it's been pretty awesome. Um, but as far as really the types of assignments in my grade book, everything that the student does in my class is in the online grade book, everything. So um, if you were to look at my grade book, you would see, I mean, we've only been in school for probably about a month and a half. You should see the number of assignments that I have in my grade book for formative assessments. When I say formative, these are all assessments that do not, do not count numerically towards the student's marking period grade. I'm very careful with saying to the kids like, oh, it doesn't count because if it doesn't count, then why would we be doing it? Everything counts. So um, when I talk to the kids about grading and like how things are going to be graded in here, I always talk about how formative assessments are amazing. They're supposed to let you know, do you know what you're doing before the actual summative assessment? And so in my grade book, you'll see a variety of assessments. In fact, you know what? I have it right here. Let me show you what it looks like. I'll I'll show you some assignments. So within my grade book, I have um, quizzes, which are just basically smaller summative assessments. And then um, I've got lab quizzes. And then look at all the homeworks. So the homeworks could be anything from a worksheet. Um, it could also be a video. You can see there's some pre-lab videos. 
Um, and then as I scroll down, here are some specific formative assessments that I did with the students. Um, so this could be in the form of an exit ticket, or sometimes I'll just announce that there's going to be a formative assessment, you know, at the start of the next class period. But as of right now, most of my assignments, if you look at the formative assessments and then you look at the homework, most of my assessments are all um, related to, you know, formative assessments. So homework is a formative assessment, and then I've got these more, you know, explicit formative assessments. So out of these um, 20 assignments, it looks like four of them are summative in nature. And we'll definitely have a few more, um, a, quite a few more, as the marking period progresses. But um, what I like so much about this is that it really allows the student and the parents and the teacher to get a more clear picture of what the student is doing in class and how they're doing. And so if the student's like, well, how can I improve? I'll always say like, let's go back to your formative assessment results. Like, how did you do? Did you say to yourself, oh, I realized I didn't, you know, I didn't do well in this, so I need to study more. So it's become a really effective tool. One question you may also ask is, like, do I hand grade everything? And so that's where Google Forms come in. I hand grade a lot of stuff, especially like the exit tickets. They're just really short and sweet. They're very quick. Um, they're actually like a third of a page. So it's just usually like one question. But Google Forms is really great for formative assessments. Um, you know, if it's multiple choice, it'll grade it right away and it can release the results to the kids. Um, but yeah, for the most part, you know, I do hand grade stuff. I try to formal, formatively assess students like at least um, once and I try twice a week, um, but it can be kind of tough, especially with the schedules. And I know we had a day off on Monday, so, um, but I do my best. I, you may say like, well, what do you put in the grade book? And so since it doesn't count numerically towards the marking period grade, what I do is I have a, a check system in place. So um, check plus means is 100% correct, complete, accurate, it's amazing. The kid did a great job. Um, the check means it's pretty good, definitely satisfactory. The kid's doing just fine. You know, if this were the test right now, most likely they'd earn, you know, a, a 75 or better, um, a passing grade. The uh, next step below is a check minus. So a check minus indicates that the student is not doing well and, and they really need some extra help or extra assistance. Um, and so the check minus usually indicates a failing score on, for example, like an Ed Puzzle video that I assigned or an exit ticket. I have more recently started to incorporate the actual numerical score on the formative assessments, at least with the Google Forms, because um, I thought it would be good to see. I what I usually do, so the program we use is called Genesis, and basically what I do with Genesis is there's a comment section. So I used to put in the percentage that was earned for like the Ed Puzzle video or the Google Form formative assessment, but I felt like nobody was clicking on it or acknowledging it. So for example, they'd see the check, but then they wouldn't check to see like, oh, the kid earned you know an 80 or whatever. And so what I decided to do was put it in the grade book so that you could see the numerical grade on the formative, like what was earned. So like, for example, if it was, you know, a 10 point formative assessment um, and the kid earned an eight out of 10, I would put in um, the eight as the score, but I don't have to put in the comments anymore because you can just multiply um, by a factor of zero on the, on Genesis. So it's really up to your grading program, but I do like actually putting the number in there that way the students and the parents and I can track what they actually did instead of having to go to multiple places to see it um, so I think that's been really really helpful and you know I I am grading all the time like not I mean it's not crazy but I do grade a lot and um, it's just because like I said you know I feel like very strongly that it's my job to be able to provide results to the students because I want them to be successful. Um, I want them to, to meet their learning goals. And so I provide as much feedback as possible so that they know where they stand. It's not ever to make the kids feel bad or make them feel like, oh my God, like I have to ace this formative. It's just to let them know, like, am I good with it? or do I need to do some sort of remedial work in order to make sure that I'm gonna perform as best I can on the summative. I hope that that was some helpful insight as far as the types of assignments that I put in the grade book and what you know, quote unquote counts versus doesn't count. I'd be curious to know what you do at your school. Does homework count for points? Do you give 
homework points? Do you still give extra credit? Um, or does homework not count at all for your grades? Let me know down in the comments box. I'd really love to know what you're doing at your school. Either way, I hope you had an amazing week with your students and I hope you have an amazing rest of your weekend.